Thank you all for attending the service. God has truly graced us with beautiful scenery around this land. Hopefully Bodie will boom again. Thank you, Mr. Clinton, for that wonderful sermon. We are so lucky to have you as a member of our community. Well, thank you. We are awaiting our real ordained minister, and my wife Rose and I will step up to the task until he or she arrives. Uh, next week, you will have the privilege of listening to my wife Rose deliver the sermon. Rose is such a wonderful speaker, and we're so grateful that you both support prohibition. It's been the law for so many years, yet so many of our own citizens are still flaunting it. Our work is certainly not done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. More and more are realizing that our society cannot function when men seek the demon rum, leaving their children unfed and unclothed. The Volstead Act of 1920 is a positive step in the right direction. I'm a family man, and I work hard to feed and protect my family. I'm proud to say not one drop of liquor has ever touched my lips. Mr. Clinton, how is your mining operation coming along? I am happy to report that my partner, Billy West, and I have introduced new technologies that will much more efficiently get the gold out of the mine tailings. We hope Bodie will boom again on that note. Bodie booming again, that is so good to hear. I know you're such a, a busy man, but we're so grateful that you had time and energy to renovate our church. Yes, Mr. Clinton, the church is beautiful once more. The church ought not to be allowed to run down like this one has. I was very grateful that I had the wherewithal to help see the project through. Once we got the workmen here, it was a simple matter. Yes, sir, but you're too modest. It was your drive that got the church renovation started. It was the right thing to do. Well, thank you, folks, but I must be getting home. Have a pleasant thank Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next Sunday. Have a good See Sunday. Sunday. Wonderful Sunday. service. Ada Boone. I'm out visiting some friends here in Bodie. I, I used to live here with my husband who owned the store and this was the warehouse where he stored all the things that he sold in the marvelous store. You've probably heard of my husband Harvey Boone and he was a merchant here for many years and uh, very active in politics here in Bodie and on many of the committees. Now uh, we've lost Harvey of course. He died three years ago in 1917. Just before this horrible pandemic started, influenza, we had to wear masks. It was a terrible time. And what was more terrible is that I lost my son, my oldest son, Stanley. And he decided to enlist as America entered the Great War. But he went to training in early November at Camp Rosecrans and before he was deployed to Europe. and. He uh, got sick, and I received a letter on November 4th uh, telling me that he had arrived safely. I hadn't even opened it yet, when at the same time, the same day, I got a telegram, and I was shocked. It informed me of his death. He had gotten sick that quickly. In fact, I brought this newspaper out because my friends, I had not been out to visit so long, that um, they had not seen this, they had been out of town. And uh, the Bridgeport Chronicle Union wrote a very nice, if tragic story. They said, news of the very sudden death of Stanley V. Boone at Camp Rosecrans, California, on November 6, 1918, has been received by his mother, Mrs. Ada A. Boone. A letter dated November 4th, stating he was in the best of health, was received simultaneously with the telegram announcing his death from pneumonia following an attack of influenza. He was just 27 at the time of his death. He was a 
hard worker. We had a farm in Bridgeport. Both my sons worked there. Leslie, my youngest, went off to War II into the Navy. Thankfully, he came home safely. But uh, I wrote a little epitaph for Stanley's Graves. I hope I may indulge you. I brought a copy of it to show my friends as well. Perhaps you'll want to go out to the Bridgeport Cemetery and see it yourself. With a cheery smile and the wave of a hand, he was wandered into an unknown land. Think of him still. At, as the same, I say, he is not dead. He is just away. So that's how I try to remember Stanley, his friendly smile and wave. And uh, he'll always be with me. Well, I imagine you have things to do and wandering around the town tonight. Uh, I won't bore you with any more ramblings. I, I do hope you enjoy your evening in our marvelous town. Good night. Look at that big car driving down Main Street. Boy, that is a fancy car. Sure doesn't belong to anybody around here. Looks, Looks like one of those cars that gangsters drive. Gangsters? Boy, you have an active imagination. Why do you think he's a gangster? Just because he drives a fancy car. Yeah. Like Pretty Boy Floyd, maybe? Pretty Boy Floyd? <laughs> John Dillinger? Well, whoever he is, gangster or not, if he came all the way from Hotham, he's going to need some gas. Yeah, let's change the sign. Good gas. Uh, my, that's a fine car you have there. Thank you. So we'll fill her up and do all your windows. Go ahead. Let's clean them off for me. We got a little dusty getting here. Hey, guys. Where can I find a good place to eat tonight? Oh, you probably want to go to Mrs. Miller's house. She's the best cook in town. Can you give me a little direction? Yeah, to turn left at the... Intersection and go up uh, about three or four houses on the right. All right, I'll do that. Okay, enjoy your meal. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming by our town. are you? We're just having, we're, 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 we're not doing anything. Don't worry about it. The feds will never make it out here. You don't think so? You want a drink? Well, is that too strong for you? That's just right for I, me. I, I need some. Well, don't spoil it. If you oh, well, I'm going to drink this. Oh, Have well, while we okay. can. Yo, great pot roast. That sounds delicious. Enjoy 
yourself, Chance. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mae Preston. I was born in the adobe house up on the hill. I'm the census taker for 1920. Oh, I've been going around to all of the houses out here. Yesterday I was out at the Scanavino Ranch. Oh, that was fun. I had some coffee with Miss Scanavino. Oh, there's a lot of people here. It's really interesting to talk to all of them. I also got to talk to the Kane family and the Gregor family. It just everyone. I'm planning on going to some of the other houses kind of further out from Bodhi soon. Well, I have to be going now, but remember, it's really important to be counted in the census. It was nice talking to you. Good evening, Mrs. Webb. Well, good evening, Mr. Johnson. How are you? Just fine. I understand you're following the 19th Amendment that was passed in Congress. Yes, yesterday was a great day for suffrage. We passed the, uh, the amendment was passed and everyone, every woman in the United States now has the, the right to vote. You know, of course, that the women in California were given the right to vote in 1911. And we have pushed very, very hard all across this country of ours to see that every woman had that same right. And it appears now that we have finally achieved our goal. Well, the Congress finally passed the 19th Amendment. We're just waiting for three quarters of the state's legislature to agree on it. Well, I understand that yesterday uh, in Tennessee, the, the, the vote was almost defeated, but for the courage of one young man who stood up, changed his vote and cast the deciding vote for the ratification of the 19th Amendment. And I do understand that it was on the request of his mother who had written him a letter, so had, had asked him to do the right thing and please vote yes. And that man was only 22 years old. And his name was Harry T. Burns. Are you going to the dance at the Miners Union Hall? I'm planning to. Well, do you know the Charleston? No. Well, I'll teach it to you because I'm not going. <laughs> okay. All right, ready? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now add the hands. Add a little twist. My name is Jim Kane. Most of you probably know who I am. Yes, this is my house, the one with the glassed in front porch. I was born in Quebec province, but came west as a young man. I ended up in Carson City at first working in a lumber yard. 
Shortly afterwards, I went to Virginia City and eventually ended up as a foreman on the V&C Railroad. I met and married Delilah, Lyle, as I used to like to call her, and we headed to the boom town of Bodie. My life was forever changed arriving in this remote town. I was at first hired by the Porter Company to deliver firewood and lumber here to Bodie. Wow, there was a need for firewood. There were over 20 hoisting works with steam engines and nine mills of various sizes. The town needed wood for heating their homes and businesses also. We first put a barge called the Rocket on Mono Lake to shuttle wood coming over from the Mono Mills lumber yard on the far side of Mono Lake. The demand was just too much for that little barge. I was actually one of several investors to build a rail line to bring that wood and lumber here into town. That narrow gauge line could deliver 100,000 cords of wood a season. A partner and I leased a plot of land up on Bunker Hill. We were lucky, we were very lucky, as we struck a previously unknown ledge of some very rich ore, and we removed $90,000 in just 90 days. Needless to say, the lease was not renewed. That lease, though, gave me my foothold here in town, my grub stake, so to speak. The mining boom, however, didn't last long in this town, only about four years total. Oh, there's still mining going on here. The standard consolidated mine, the one up on Bunker Hill, now called Standard Hill, is still in operation. I lease it out to leasees and take my cut off the top of whatever they produce. They also have to pay me to crush their ore as I have only, I have the only current operational mill here in town. There was a resurgence of sorts back in the 90s when the cyaniding process was brought here into town. With partners, I purchased much of the tailings that had gathered over the decades. Tailings are the waste product from crushing ore in the stamp mills. They still contain some fine particles of gold in them. Until there was a technology to extract that gold, these acres and acres of thousands of tons of tailings were scattered all over the place, corralled in what we used to call tailings ponds. Well, that technology showed up in the form of cyaniding. I invested heavily in cyanide mills to rework the tailings, and we recovered a lot of gold. The tailings have been pretty much all been reworked now, so Bodie has now settled into more of a sleepy little town, more than an active mining town. My business interests are not all mining activities, however. In my earlier years, I could handle a bullwhip pretty good and did a lot of freighting. Many years later, I bought a bank and am still operating it today. I also invested in water rights throughout the region where we dammed up creeks to provide a source of power for generating electricity. The standard mill that I referred to earlier, which I acquired through a legal arrangement, made history a few years back. It was the first industrial building in this whole country to be supplied with electrical power from a power plant 13 miles away over on Green Creek near Bridgeport. I also love racehorses and betting on some of them also. Along with others, we started a racing association here in Bodie and have a nice oval track south of town in Booker Flats over yonder. My favorite horse is a trotter I named Bodie Bird. I've made a lot of money with that horse. The Bodie Mutz baseball team have their field right smack dab in the middle of the track infield. 
as different mining claims were abandoned, I acquired them for very little. I own about three quarters of the Bodie Mining District from the top of Standard Hill south all the way out to Queen Bee Hill. Warren Luce and Partners still operate some claims on the north side of Bodie Bluff. As different real estate throughout town was abandoned, I picked those up for little or nothing. You can pretty much say I own most of the town and the mining rights. I'm not bragging though, mind you. I love this town and it's been very good to me over the years. I want to do what I can to help preserve this cold, windy, dusty old place I call home. While there are now only a few hundred folks living in town, I am holding out for a better future. There is a large section of a very rich Fortuna ledge that hasn't been discovered yet. It faulted inside the hill and no one has been able to find that remaining section. Maybe someday. Lyle's health is starting to decline, and I think it best she go to San Francisco with family. She needs to get out of this altitude and the cold winters. I'll stay here a bit longer. I just really believe Bodie will boom again. I'm considering an idea about hiring caretakers to look over my holdings and see what the future holds. In the meantime, I just want to try and protect what's been a part of me for so long, a part of mining and a part of California history. It's probably one of the last old time mining camps we'll ever see. Good night and long live Bodie. Since its formation in 2008, the Bodie Foundation has provided tens of thousands of dollars to state parks. Funds are primarily used on stabilization projects of many structures throughout town. Things like foundation repairs, replacing broken windows, re-roofing structures, new water systems, new water plant are just a few examples. The foundation also helped fund several repairs from the 2016 earthquake damages we had here. Would you please consider a donation to the Bodie Foundation today? You can see what we've accomplished and donate right on our website, www.bodiefoundation.org. We're protecting Bodie's future by preserving its past. Thank you very much for your continued support and good night. Get